We are back again. Um, it's still the 7th um, of May, lunch hour show. It's myself and last born, Sepan Khole. Um, today, there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot to talk about. But before we go there, let me just allow Sepan to greet you. And let me remind you that the show is called TBR Solution Sports Program. Uh, last born, will you kindly greet the viewers? Yes, uh, good morning to the viewers out there. Um, yes, part two of the show. And yeah, hope uh, everyone enjoys the show. Good afternoon, to be exact. So yeah, um, hope everyone enjoys the show. And yeah, a lot of news that we'd like to unpack that happened during the course of the week, internationally mostly. So I hope everyone enjoys the show. I must say, I must say, uh... I was a bit flattered, but at the same time, very excited that Vina recognized that TBR is doing a good job in terms of educating people with finance. Um, he encouraged us to continue. Uh, so that means uh, people out there are starting to uh, get in the message that we are trying to preach, uh, which is quite good. Um, it was pleasing to hear him saying that because that's all what we want to do. Uh, we want to, because money is everything, we want to teach people and make sure that uh, they survive. You cannot survive without money. Uh, you want it, you like it or not. And money, is, money is key. Unfortunately, people don't under, understand what money. So our mission is to teach about money so that people can be able to resolve their problems. TBR Solutions is all about that. Now, um, Sepan. We saw a big one, Champions League semi-final. People have been saying many times, you cannot rule out uh, Real Madrid, irrespective of personnel. Yes, we saw that Ronaldo left. There was Halabalu, but Real Madrid continued to do the job, all right? And all of a sudden, we see Benzema rising, you know? And for the first time in his career, He's going to taste Pichichi. Uh -huh. He's going to taste yeah. Pichichi. And for the first time in his life, he may taste the Ballon d'Or. All right. So a lot of things are happening. This is the best year for, uh, for, for, this is the best year for, 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 what's his name again? Benzema. For Benzema. So, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited for Benzema. And then uh, I wish he wins the Ballon d'Or. Although if you ask me my first prize, I want to send your money to win it. All right. We'll talk about this at some point closer towards the Ballon d'Or. The reason being very simple, Sadio Mane has won the, the AFCON. Uh, Sadio Mane has helped the bus, uh, Liverpool. They, they may win treble for me. And, 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 and Sadio Mane has taken Liverpool to the Champions League. So that is why I say Sadio Mane. And I like him, man. I like him. You know, Sadio Mane, Sadio Mane is a approach to life synchronized with mine. Uh, the guy loves development. That's what I love too. So apart from that, not because of that, but football-wise, I think Sadio Mane has done well. He deserves it. But I will never be feeling bad if uh, Benzema win because Sadio Man is still very young. It would be nice to see Benzema win now because not long Benzema will be retiring. And at a later stage, Sadio Man wins. But this is the year where I think Sadio Man has a better opportunity to win. And I don't know how Messi is going to vote because Messi normally votes for his teammates. Of course, which simply tells me that it's going to be Mbappe and, and Neymar that are going to be voted. But I know in the past, Messi has voted for Sadio Mane. You see? So, and then, I don't know. I know that Messi likes Benzema. Uh, there's mutual respect between the two. I don't know. We're, very interesting. We're going to see who's going to vote for who. All right? Whether Messi is going to continue the tradition of voting for his teammates and then uh, spice it with one of a person that he thinks he really deserves it. And that, that's me. Now let's look at the Champions League. Let me hear your comment. How did you see the game? What a game. 
What a game. What a comeback. This was a real comeback. This reminds me the comeback of Barcelona against PSG. Remember that? Yeah, uh, true. Uh, it's, it was, uh, you know, one of the best comeback. That one, for me, is still one of the best. Barcelona against PSG. Because there, we thought that Barcelona were dead and buried. So we don't know. This one was also one of the best. So your take, uh, last one. Yeah, um, this was one of the best comebacks ever, man. Um, I mean, in the ninth, in the eighty ninth minute, uh, Man City was winning the game by one goal to zero. You know, we thought the game is over. Hey, but the the the, the super sub, man. Uh, the this Rodrigo boy keeps coming up and doing it for Real Madrid. He did it again. Came in. Bang the second one, you know. Uh, good assist from the youngster as well, uh, Kamavinga, who's 19 years old, you know. Um, he's 19 years old, and the impact that he has had on that game, uh, being involved, you know, in all three goals, that says a lot. Came through again with another assist, you know, for Rodrigo uh, in the 93rd or 94th minute, if I'm not mistaken, which was extra time. Rodrigo again with the equalizer, you know. So taking the game to extra time and Kamavinga again coming through with another chance, you know, being involved in the play and so that Real Madrid could uh, win the penalty and just, you know, Karim Benzema does, uh, did what he does best, you know, and just sealing the game, you know. So that's just greatest comebacks of, one of the greatest comebacks of all time. And just imagine them winning the Champions League. The only difference is with Barcelona that didn't win the Champions League. Uh, they just went through to the semi-finals, yes. But um, but for Real Madrid to get such a comeback, you know, and if they win it, I mean, this will be for the box. But it's 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 surprising how and overwhelming how everyone is just behind Real Madrid. You know, to be honest, because of Karim Benzema, his current form has been phenomenal. You know, um, what that man is doing right now with Real Madrid, showing leadership at his age, you know. And I guess all good things take time. And finally, he won the Pechichi, which is currently happening. Might win the Champions League as well, you know. And might take Madrid even to the Treble Cup. Maybe they might win the Treble this season. So anything can happen. So, yeah, that was one of the best games ever in the Champions League. Um, I remember I did say that this year's Champions League, for me personally, was one of the best Champions League uh, um, tournament I've ever watched, ever since I started watching the Champions League, because it was filled with a lot of drama, you know, a lot of drama, a lot of things happened in this year's Champions League. So, yeah, um, I, I'm actually excited. Even with the Liverpool and Villar uh, Villarreal game, Liverpool came out of that one, they were so lucky as well. Villarreal fought in the game as well, you know, but it's just unfortunate how things turned out, you know, um, just Real Madrid being uh, the better team, you know, uh, I think experience played in that game, in that match, but uh, Villarreal fought hard. They was just so close because they came back from a, 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 a two to a two new uh, lead, which Liverpool was leading the game, and then they came back. They managed to salvage a two old draw. But I guess it was a bit too late, you know, funny mistakes from the keeper, which led Liverpool to come back in that game and just seal the game. But yeah, Champions League this week was was actually out of this world. I can agree because you are still very young. We've seen a lot of Champions League. We've seen a lot of uh, exciting games. Uh, Via Real, I want to say to them, they've done well. You know, that town is very small, very small. For them to produce a team like that one, that's great. You know, the way it's small, you know, Bretts. Bretts. I think that, <laughs> that place is as small as that one. Even if uh, I'm sure even Bretts is even better than, than Villarreal. Uh, for them to produce such a quality team, that's a great achievement. That's a pride for uh, that area. Uh, Ruli made a lot of mistakes. Two goals under your legs, um, really. It's unacceptable. I don't know what, what went to his head, but probably it was his off day. But at the same time, we need to acknowledge 
uh, Klopp. Klopp is a genius, man. You know, you have this young man, um, Raf not Rafina, what's his name? Uh, the young man who plays, um, um, the, the, the one who has just come in that I like in Diaz. You know, hey, and Diaz, then, uh, is Diaz is on form, but look at what Klopp does. He's psychological a game. He started with him at the bench. And you can imagine the boy, I think, was itching to play. When he came in, he changed the game. You do understand? And I'm sure uh, Villarreal, when they were planning, he was part of the people that they were planning at this. So Klopp destabilized them by not playing him. And when he brings him in, the boy was hungry. The boy wants to prove a point. And he definitely changed the game. So uh, sometimes that is why I could not understand when Stuart Baxter said, it is not the coach. There is no best coach in the world. What does that mean? Because it, it has to do with a lot of uh, the coach. It depends how do you plan your game. You listen to Peter talk about the game. You'll understand what the coach is, you know. Uh, listen to Peter when he plans the game. You listen to the Mamelodi Sundowns trio when they talk about the game in terms of analysis and so on. Um, so it, 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 it doesn't, for me, it's wrong to say it's, it's not a coach. We have the best coach. We have coach who are not the best coach. Now, as much as Ro, uh, Ronald Koeman didn't do well, but Ronald Koeman, what he did well, he discovered uh, Gavi, he discovered uh, uh, Pedri, uh, he gave them chance, you know, uh, he must say heads off to, 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 to such efforts. I didn't like his tactics, but he did well. Um, he brought Arojo, remember? Uh, Kumen. Kumen, the credit should be given to Kumen. He has done a lot. So you can't say the coach does not have an impact on the game. The coach has everything in the game, you know, see. And I can tell you, I still say it. Arthur will do well. And I must say big up to Togo Mguni, my former colleague at Maskagaze um, High School in Tembisa. He's one of the ardent uh, fans of our show. As, as, as I'm busy here, I see her comments. He's looking forward to Kaiser Chiefs and, 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 and Mamluri Sundown's game. Thank you, Togo. I really appreciate it. She sent me a, a WhatsApp message. So do, do you hear what I'm saying? So it would be wrong to say, Coaches don't have impact. They do, they do, all right? So yeah, we need to acknowledge that. And one people said, Barcelona has never won the Champions League without Messi. Pep Guardiola has never won the Champions League without Messi, all right? But Messi has won the Champions League without Pep Guardiola. And I can tell you, Messi can still win the Champions League without Barcelona. Watch the space. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, and then uh, you can't say you don't have geniuses, either a coach or a player. Uh, you know, my, my attitude towards Messi, uh, I, I'm, lost for, I'm lost for words. You know, I don't know how to describe this guy. For me, he's the best. He's the best, you know. Uh, if you ask me my wish, I don't wish to meet many people, but uh, that one, I would love to meet him. Just to say, you're doing a good job by entertaining us. Lionel Messi is my king, mm -hmm. uh, of course. Now, uh, so that game, that is how I can wrap it up. Now, let's go to the big one. Antonio Conte has described uh, Ronaldo as the player who should be considered the best for Premier League this season. You should win the best player of the year in the Premier League. And then uh, I don't know what's your take. Uh, you agree or disagree, but if you ask me, uh, Antonio Conte is one of the coaches that I respect much. I think the guy is a genius. Uh, for me, uh, you know, Man United made a mistake by not employing him. And uh, for me, uh, PSG, they should consider signing Antonio Conte. Because he's, he's, he's a great coach as far as I'm concerned. Very passionate, just like Klopp. Uh, knows what, when to talk and, and, and how to talk. Um, so if that statement is coming from him, it carries a huge weight, all right? 
Yeah, let me hear your take. Uh, Tsepa, what's your take? Yes, no, um, yeah, he did say that um, judging from this season, he considers Cristiano Ronaldo as the best player in the Premier League and just the award, the award should go to him. Um, yeah, there might be a few candidates that we could look at. Uh, Yosadio Mane, Salah as well. Um, Thiago Alcantara did well also this season. Um, Yomares is doing well. Kevin De Bruyne is also doing well this season. Um, there's a lot of players that we could actually consider, you know, um, during this season. Um, Son from Tottenham Hotspur has also did well. Hey, but Ronaldo also, you know, um, maybe he's leading the pack because a lot of people are actually um, saying that uh, they agree with Conte. So... It, it might be true, you know, um, but I don't doubt it. Um, I, 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 I can support that decision, you know. I can support that decision as well. Um, Ronaldo is doing phenomenal. As much as uh, Manchester United is not doing well, but we shouldn't judge him regarding the club, but individually as a player. Um, his contribution, what he's been doing and helping the team out, he's been doing very good. And his figures are good as well. Um, so... Yeah, if it happens, I don't think it's a decision which anyone will be shocked of. Um, yeah, Ronaldo has been doing well. He did well this season, actually, to be honest. So I, I, I second that opinion, to be honest. And let's see how the, the, the league and season ends, you know. Um, it's like in regards to the top four, you know. Um, it's very tricky now, to be honest. The next coming games... Uh, that are coming in, we don't even know who's going to be in the top four, to be honest. I cannot predict anymore because even with the teams, you feel like one team will stay in the top three or top four, but now things have changed. I mean, you can even look at the gap between Chelsea and Arsenal right now. It's just it's, it's just a three-point gap. With Tottenham, it's a four-point gap. With the Man United being that it's a nine game, it's a nine-point gap, if I'm not mistaken. So we don't know how the season will end in the next coming four, three games to go you know, within the top four. So it's kind of difficult to actually uh, predict, but this is what makes the Premier League one of the best leagues in the world. Well, it is personally, in my opinion, because of such, you know, such action, such um, 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 controversy going on and... You just don't know who will come up at, at tops, to be honest, every season. So, yeah, that's what's happening at the moment. And I yeah, will see what happens in regards to that award, particular of Cristiano Ronaldo. Because even this week, he was voted uh, Man United Player of the Month again. So, yeah, I guess things are looking up for him. Well, um, I don't know. Let me tell you my honest view. Uh, sometimes I see a lot of hypocrisy. Uh, you know, there was, um, I think I'll show you during the Messi special, I did it last week, or I did it on, on Tuesday, um, a year where Messi did exceptionally well in terms of numbers, but because he didn't win Champions League, they said, no, nah, no, nah. he lost uh, the Ballon d'Or uh, to Ronaldo. Um, and, and, and my argument is, um, and I will never rule out Sergio Mane. Uh, Sergio Man, as much as they say uh, it's a Premier League, uh, uh, Ronaldo's best year, but Sergio Man for me has done extremely well. I've already said in the morning that uh, Sergio Man is on the verge of winning trouble. Sergio Man uh, with, with uh, Liverpool, but not only that, he has already won the AFCON, which is the biggest tournament. Eh? We should not underestimate AFCON as if it's a lesser tournament compared to Euro and Copa. All right. Messi won the, 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 the Ballon d'Or. One of the biggest influential factors was because he won the, the Copa America. For me, Sergio Man has won uh, AFCON. You know, he led uh, uh, Senegal to win AFCON and he led uh, Liverpool to be where it is. He led Liverpool to qualify for, for, for the Champions League. As I'm saying, he's on the verge of winning treble, uh, Sadio Man. For me, 
I would go for Sadio Mane. As much as I respect Conte, I have nothing against uh, 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 um, um, uh, Ronaldo. I agree he's a good player. I won't be disappointed if he becomes the best player in, 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 in EPL. Uh, I'll never be disappointed. But if you ask me, I would go for Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane for me has done well. So that, that's my argument. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I would put Sadio Mane. As much as I say, I'll never be disappointed if Ronaldo wins. But uh, if you bring those arguments that always, Messi would always be docked by those arguments, irrespective of what he played. Ah, he hasn't won this and that. His team, where is his team? Messi with his bad, 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 bad season, he won the league in France. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So hence I'm All saying right. for me, Sadio Mane for me would be the, 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 the good candidate to win that title. Yes, Salah has done well. Uh, Salah has been brilliant this season. And then uh, the goals, the numbers tells you, uh, the assist, the numbers tells you, but Sadio Mane for me comes tops. But like I say, I'll never be disappointed if Ronaldo take the, the title. I don't know. You want to add? That's my argument. I know you have already agreed that Sadio mm -hmm. should also uh, be, be considered. I would take Sadio Mane ahead of Ronaldo. Not to say I hate Ronaldo. Okay. Those are my reasons why I say Sadio Mane uh, for me uh, deserve uh, uh, to be a player to, to win that. But nevertheless, now let's move on. We we here to tell us what's happening with Mbappe. What what um, what are the rumors saying? Has he signed with a PSG? Has he not signed with PSG? Uh, what's happening with him going to Real Madrid? If you ask me, if he joined Real Madrid, Real Madrid will be unstoppable because I will see him playing with Vinicius. But Vinicius has grown because Vinicius now contributes, unlike before when he arrived. And Vinicius is still very young. He would go alone, but this time he would, uh, you know, the assist that he has done for Benzema are, are, are immense. Uh, well, if you bring uh, what is what you call Mbappe with his speed, he adds value. Uh, but he's more of an individual player for me. All right. And then, uh, but I still say if he goes there, Madrid, chances are they will be unstoppable. But I don't know. If he stays with Barcelona, uh, with uh, PSG, that would be good for him, you know. Uh, I don't know whether it would be good for Messi. That would be good for him because Messi will keep on supplying. He has already said it, that uh, he couldn't have scored all these goals if Messi was not uh, assisting him. He said, uh, this guy is a genius. So for him, it would be good to remain at, at, uh, at, at PSG. Just to finish a year with Barcelona, with, with Messi, and then before Messi decide to go somewhere. So... Let me hear from you. What's happening? Yeah, no, um, a decision hasn't been reached yet. He scratched out all the rumors saying that he has signed. Um, he says that he's still deciding and focusing on this season um, and spending time with his family discussing the contracts which are coming in from different clubs. And it's a decision which he still needs to make with his family. So those are his words. He hasn't signed anything. And we we'll wait and we we'll wait to see what will happen in the next coming uh, a couple of months. Now we hear that uh, Suarez wants to go back to Barcelona. He wants to finish uh, his career there, uh, which is a surprise. I thought Suarez would go back to Liverpool uh, because you know he's loved there, and he he's loved there. Um, um, He's really loved in, 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 in England and the Liverpool fans, they love him so much. I thought he'd go back because what he said at some point, he wants to go back to Liverpool. Then after, after that, he wants to go back to uh, his native country. Uh, was it Naples, the team that he was playing for? Or Nice? Um, he wants to go back. Uh, no, 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 not his native. He wants to go back to France. And, and, and thank the team that he started with when he came from South America to Europe. Uh, but now we understand he wants to go back to uh, Barcelona. I don't know, what's your take about that? 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think he has reached a stage in his career where um, he just plans on retiring, um, maybe thinking which better team to retire in and have a good, peaceful retirement, I guess. I think that's what he's looking at right now. But I think any team that he would go to, they would open up, they'll open their arms for him, you know, and just welcome him well. Um, even if he goes back to Liverpool, just for a year, it will be fine, you know. He's a legend there. Even at Barcelona as well, if it happens, well, the how he left Barcelona is a problem. You know how they treated him, how Bartomeu treated him um, when he left the club. I think that's something that that maybe might play a role on how he was treated when he left. And we also even Messi didn't like um, that, you know, and how everything turned out, you know, because he was loyal to the club for six, seven years. And how they mistreated him when Bartomeu just decided not to, could say, renew his contract and keep him, you know. Um, but uh, maybe him going to Liverpool would be a good thing. That's how I see it. And for him to go back to France. So maybe um, those two moves might do good for him than going back to Barcelona. I don't see him maybe doing much in Barcelona because he's already in Spain at the moment. So maybe moving back to a different country uh, for, for uh, from his former clubs would do well for him. You know what? Um, I don't think the problem, there will be a problem. Remember the leadership has changed completely. We have a new leadership at Barcelona. So those people who, who ill-treated him are gone, all right? So maybe that is one of the reasons why He's contemplating of returning to Barcelona. And again, uh, Messi has come out. It is said, it is said, not Messi has come out. I need to correct it. It is said that Messi is more angry to PK than Laporte. Because they said PK is the one who influenced the decision of Laporte for Messi to be sold. All right? And, 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 the rumors are saying, you know, they don't, um, you don't see them hanging around together anymore. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, last week, he, I think he was back in Spain and then he was seen uh, hanging around with PK. All right. And, and the rumors are saying the feud is not only between uh, PK and Messi, it's also between their wives. All right, so uh, I don't rule out Messi and Laporta reconciling. And maybe that's what influence uh, Suarez. And it has been said, Messi has said, if there's anybody that he trusts, he fully trusts is Suarez. And that's the guy that he opens up to, all right? So that statement might not just come as a coincidence because I see Messi going back to Barcelona after the end of his contract. I know that PK wants to be the president, but what happened to Messi might have a huge influence in making him be the president of Barcelona in the near future. He may be the president, but not in the Dear future. All right. So those are rumors. Those are rumors. Those are speculation that we see uh, reports. So that's what I, I'm saying. So, you know, our champ here at home, my favorite athlete, Akane Simbini, once said to me, yo, 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 you know, Spain, but Spain is weather is like South African weather. It's a nice city to be. Ghana has been all over the world, but he said Spain is nice. So those could be one of the reasons that push Suarez to say, I want to go back to Barcelona. And remember, uh, Messi too, he loved the environment in, uh, in, 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 in Barcelona. Uh, hence, he wants to go back. So yeah, those are, yes, of course, he could have said that before to say, I want to go back to Liverpool, go back to France uh, as a farewell, but um, what I've already 
said could also influence him. We don't know what they are talking because they talk almost every day, him and Messi. Uh, their wives and their kids, their friends, just like Messi and, and, and Fabregas, you know? So those are some of the things that I'm saying probably could have a huge impact uh, on this one. So what's your take, last one? Are you there? Let's go. Yeah. Yes, 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 I'm still here. Um, yeah, it's a, I think it's a matter of, I don't know, uh, loyalty maybe that, that might have played uh, and influenced everything. Um, but we do know that um, uh, PK as well, the influence that he has in Barcelona, it's quite big, especially him and his family, you know, from the business side of things. Um, I mean, we all know Piquet doesn't even have to play football, to be honest. Um, uh, I could say that he's, he's, he's I don't know, but um, he's, he's quite a, the big shot, or, or, or let me just put it that way, of that team, you know? Um, the influence that him and his family has in Spain as in general is Ooh. big. Yes, but um, in regards to that decision, if it's true, then... Yeah, I have raised a lot of eyebrows, you know, based on what happened. But maybe what happened happened for a reason. That's all I can say. Because it's the politics side of things, which I don't really like to follow and go into. But um, if that's the case, then I guess it happened. And maybe loyalty didn't play a role. Um, and he wasn't maybe feeling messy as much as we thought that he was feeling him so. Yeah, I guess that decision happened. Or maybe they're just waiting for PK to retire, then they'll go back. Maybe they might have been thinking about that. So who knows what might happen? No, it's it's not about um, he's got an influence as such. He does have an influence, but he has touched the serious nerve. You touch Messi. What are you saying to the Barcelona fans? Do you understand? That was the biggest mistake for me. Why Laporta won that? Laporta used Messi as a ticket. Did you get a point? I'm saying, I'm saying, watch this space. When Messi finishes his uh, contract, he may go back even PK is there. And uh, we know what would happen. I see PK hanging up his boots. Instead, I see uh, Busquet. Busquet is the guy who's already I'm hearing the murmuring. Busquet says Messi should come back. Not only Busquet, uh, Daniel Vest said, I want to play with Messi for at least one season. That's a big nerve. Did you understand? Yes, he's got money, PK, but he has touched a serious nerve. Do you understand? And, 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 and now I also follow up. Daniel Vest said, Xavi took a phone call and called me. I was busy with my things. And then he called me, said, I want to hear. Now you talk about Danny Alves. You know Danny Alves. He's very influential. They say he's a he's guy with a lot of jokes. They say he hasn't changed. He's still Danny Alves that they know. He's got a lot of influence in the dressing room. Now, if you have a player like Danny Alves saying that, what about uh, Jody, Jody Alba? All of them. They say, and the other person who has the problem with me, I think it's Testag. And uh, when I listen to the rumors, Barcelona are looking at look at replacing Testeg with another coach. That could be one of the reasons for me. Well, we'll watch the space and see what's happening. All right. Mm -hmm. Now let me go to the Messi special, the part that I love most. You know, uh, when I do this, uh, I love most. Now let me just check. I want to come here. You know, um, um, and I, don't, I hope you see. I hope you see. Um, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Ronaldo with number seven, and 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 Eden Hazard with number seven. They just won only two La Liga. Two La Liga, All right? And Messi has won eight. Eight. On top of that, Messi has just added one in in France. Uh, he has just gone to France. All right, so two, 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 two La Liga. So yeah, that's that's one thing that I wanted us to 
check about. I remember I said to you, I don't know how people, uh, I'm not saying um, Conte is wrong, but I said, this is the year, 2016. I felt that Messi was robbed. Messi, if you look at the Ballon d'Or race, which was won by Ronaldo, Ronaldo's contribution was 71 goals and assists. Messi was 90 goals and assists. Look at the difference, 71 and 90, 19. And uh, Griezmann was five goals and assists. Suarez, 78. Suarez was even better than Ronaldo in terms of goal and assist in 2016. But what happened? Messi never won it, all right? So that is why I'm saying I don't have a problem uh, with Ronaldo winning it. But if I look at the facts, if this is what is being used as a yardstick, as a criteria. I think this I was think... when uh, Real Madrid won the Latissima, when they kept winning the Champions League, when they won it three years in a row. Yeah, yeah this was this. But I'm saying, I'm saying, look at the, their influence into the game. Yes, yes. In that 2016, did you get my point? Because yes, when yes. you talk about the best player in Europe or in in England, we are looking at individual performance. Okay, individual performance, and I'm saying this is what happened, and I'm saying Sergio Mane has done well this year, and then. Uh, Look, I still repeat, uh, I will never uh, get disappointed if, if Ronaldo wins. I'll never get disappointed. But this is what I bring. I want to bring to, 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 to your attention. Messi with ordinary team of Barcelona. He won titles. Ordinary team. You know, when I listen to the commentators in the Champions League in Germany, they said Messi, after they were beaten by Bayern Munich, said maybe we were fooled by the fact that Messi took an ordinary team, made it a, a competitive team. All right. Now, yes, Ronaldo is a star, but where is, where is uh, Man United as we speak? They're struggling to qualify for top four. They haven't won anything. All right. And Messi is struggling this year, and they've won the league. And his goal, by the way, bring, brought the league. Man of the match, you're saying he has been voted man of the match. Look at the difference, man. It was prior to last week or wherever. I mean, uh, this man won 222 man of the match. Look at the gap between him and Eden Hazard, who was the guy following him with CC2. And men of the match, we have beaten 21 game, 21 players. We are the best in that game. This guy has taken 222, more than 100. And, uh, you know, I don't see Ronaldo in this. Uh, 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 well, that one is overall in terms of the best player uh, of all time. But, 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 but I'm just giving you an example. All right, and and even this year, uh, this group that I follow, who are Messi fans, where I get the news from, uh, I want to see when they do the man of the matches. Ever since he went to a, P a PSG, and see how 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 far has he done. I hope he has done a lot. He has done a lot. So uh, last one, thank you very much. I agree with you. Uh, I'll be happy if Ronaldo wins, uh, and. Uh, one thing that excites me, that the coach, the new coach for Man United, he rates Ronaldo highly. And then it's not only now, even before he came in 2017, he used to use Ronaldo as a, as a criteria set. He's an athlete, he, he jumps high, he scores goals, he's a professional. Um, so that sounds well for me, if the coach, He's coming and already talking like this. I see him going to make Ronaldo comfortable. Because I was not of the view that because Ronaldo is left with one season, they need to make him feel uncomfortable. My view, let Ronaldo finish his season. If needs be, if he still want to continue, 
allow him to continue and finish his career at Man United. All right, he's, he's happy there and they love him there. It would be nice to see Man United qualifying for the Champions League. I know that Ronaldo wants that more than anything else. So, last one. Uh, last one, I still there. Okay, it seems as if uh, I've lost a uh, last one. So maybe something has just happened due to internet. But nevertheless, thank you very much. It was the show uh, this lunch hour. And like I said, thank you very much. And then thank you to the people who keeps on talking to me on the site here uh, on my WhatsApp. I've seen Tabiso Silematzela, who's on our group and then uh, also commenting. Thank you very much. Thank you for following. We really appreciate it. We need your support as much as um, you want us to give you the best news. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is the Sobri Voice Juan Fratsi from the Big R or TBR Solution. Uh, one of the companies owned by TBR Solution is the Big R Financial Services, an authorized financial service provider. I'm sure you have noticed that uh, the past few months or so, we've seen a lot of deaths and those deaths are attributed to mental illness. Mental illness can be caused by anything, it can be caused by stress, depression, and stress and depression can be caused by a number of things, lack of finances or financial problem or social problem or marital problem. So they cause all those problems. Um, we in the financial sector, we see it almost now and again, because uh, we work with various organizations like GPF, independent fund organization. But while I'm still there, let me stress, we don't have a formal relationship with GPF, but we work with them because most of our people are from there. Now, working with those people, you know very well that uh, people who are working for the government, they're expected to retire at the age of 60 and above, right? If you retire earlier than that, then you are being penalized by GPF. And sometimes people say, no, I need money. So what do they do? They resign. They say, no, let the money go to my bank account. Once you do that, you are tax heavy. So you need to bear that in mind, okay? But now, let's say for argument's sake, you are 55 as we speak and above, and you are contemplating of either resigning or going on pension in the next three months or so, just drop us a WhatsApp so that we help you to expedite for your payment. Because according to the GPF rules and, and, and pension fund law, once a client or a member receive an SMS that they have received your forms, that means they have 60 days to complete the process. And mind you, the 60 days is a maximum. It doesn't mean it has to take 60 days. It's a maximum. Now, sometimes we see people that don't get their money for two to three, four, five months, six months, even more, or a year or so. And then there, the problem could emanate either from the GPF side, employer side, a, a member himself. So what do we do? we try to expedite that, that process by making sure that we understand the, waxing, the workings of GPF. If it's a member, we help him to do the right thing. The same with GPF, the same with uh, employer organization. Now, remember, as I have already said that with GPF, it's 60 and above. Now, and then we say, if you're 55 or more, you can contact us. And another, good element is this, with the fund that you're working with, you, there is a whole lot of flexibility. You can decide how much you earn. That's how flexible it is. And if, let's say, you pass on, you and your spouse, uh, you can nominate anyone. You are not limited to your immediate family, like your biological children or an officially adopted children. Remember, even your children, they can benefit uh, as long as they're 22 and below. But with us, it doesn't matter. They can be above 22, they can be your, your elders, or they will still benefit because you nominated them. And then um, we try by all means that when we take the money from GPF and invest with credible fund organization, 
with try by all means that you are list text, all right? And then, uh, and even uh, uh, you are not punished because you are not taking the money because you are taking to another fund. So which means an independent and credible fund. So it means that uh, um, there's no need to tax you more. So those are some of the advantages that are there. So you need to bear that in mind. And then if you want to know more, just drop us a WhatsApp on our WhatsApp number. Then we'll call you back. You don't have to call us. We'll call you back and see how can we expedite it. I thank you.